Happy Monday, everybody. Oh. Yo. We're going to do the Weird Things program in just a few minutes. Thank you for joining us. Oh, yeah. The live stream. Yeah, it's getting weird on a Friday, baby. That's right. The way, way it was meant to be. That's right. Three, Just three people podcasting on a Friday. That's the Dude, way it's always been. It. Yeah. You know, whatever. These other people, you don't need them. Don't want them. No. Nope. As long as we got the core. The tripod. Yep. That's what they call us. Separately right. and collectively. Yeah, it's kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know who decided that. It was not an internal decision. Just, God did. It just happened. Here we go. <laughs> uh, hey, everybody. Yeah, man, I I, 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 had a, I had a really frustrating morning uh, oh? for technical issues. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, you were dealing with that Facebook stuff. Oh, well, jeez. Well, that, uh, that was another. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, uh, we tried to migrate. We're not wrong to Acast. Uh, it borked. Ooh. I thought we had reverted it correctly. Mm. Uh, not in time, apparently, as uh, Apple had already got the, the new thing, which was non-existent. And so... I had to go through that. Yeah. And then <laughs> Facebook has put me in Facebook jail for inviting people to an event. Which is weird. You've sent me events before. Ashley sent me events before. I've I've created one. And that was the We're Not Wrong live show. Wow. And now I'm in Facebook jail. I don't know. Did you give, did Whatever. You give Mark his cut? Did you give a, a, his cut of the ticks? my cut. His door ticks? I was trying to hype up his pay-per-view. Let's let's actually start with that. Can let's we? start with that. You want to begin? Let's begin. Okay. Um, hi everybody. Uh, you ready to do this, Andrew? Ready. Ready to do this? Okay. Then uh, I'll count you in to start the weird things program. Recording one, recording two. All right. Let's have a show in three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Mr. Weird himself. <laughs> Mr. Weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, that's right. Joining me is Mr. Strange. <laughs> yep, that's me. That's My cousin got his doctorate, uh, and I just became a lifeguard. <laughs> we need, and we need Bryce. Him. <laughs> Hi, Look at that. I'm Bryce Mysterio. Uh, can uh, I... Can I ask? I said this on Daily Tech News Show, but I'm curious your guys' opinion. Yeah. That's Justin Robert Young. For Hi, what's up? Wondering. What's up, fam? And I'm Andrew Main. Hi, Andrew That's Main. It. I said that if the joking physical feud between serial entrepreneur Elon Musk and Meta founder Mark Zuckerberg were indeed to culminate in some kind of mother of all influencer boxing pay-per-view that it would be the highest earning pay-per-view in the history of the medium that it would make more money than, than any, any other, fight. other fight in the history of now combat now sports future? boxing mma well i mean I, don't, I can't tell the future but i mean in terms of like I, i'm not to say it's there forever mm. but i think as far as celebrities go they're probably two of the biggest well I and it helps that they have, you know, uh, world altering wealth <laughs> at their fingertips, right? I, There's a certain I, amount of like, eh, hey, you know what? It, let them, the let them fight gif is my response to that. I don't know. And here's my reasoning for this. Okay. Um, one is a pay per view act, pay per view act package is actually really expensive, right? And so when you hear high to, to the, to the, to the consumer or to put it on. No, to the consumer. Yeah. Uh, tr traditionally, I think in, in our modern world, if we were to look for a comp, uh, Bryce, if you could look it up, the, the Floyd Mayweather Logan Paul uh, pay-per-view, that was an absolute joke of an actual fight. Floyd Mayweather is one of the best boxers of all time. Logan Paul is a very popular influencer. Uh, but that was 50. And I've seen that pushed for big ticket fights for MMA as high as like 80. Yeah. So then, are you? So then, what is? What do you think the cost is I, for Musk v Zuck? Is it a hundred dollars? Well, I don't know that people will pay that. I think there's a. I think there's a certain number of people that yes, they will pay, but I think that 
there's way more people willing to watch a really good boxing match than there are willing to pay 50 bucks to watch these guys fight. I, I would agree with you if it weren't for the fact that we have seen influencer boxing, uh, uh, both with the Paul brothers and uh, uh, in, in a lower scale of just YouTuber versus YouTuber that has sold out arenas and done respectable business. Uh, yeah, but I don't think the difference between selling out an arena and being the biggest pay-per-view event of all time. I guess I'm also saying this without knowing what the thing, Bryce, is there any way that you can, you can look up what, what the, what the highest grossing pay-per-view of, of all time is because I'm, I'm throwing that out there based on this idea. And by the way, if you haven't heard this, uh, I forget where it started, but Mark Zuckerberg, who takes on yearly challenges, is very public of, about yearly challenges that he, that he takes on. One time it was learning Mandarin. Uh, one year it was that he was only going to eat things that he killed. Uh, oh. There was, of course, smoke and meats, which is something that he said about 50,000 times during a live stream. Sweet baby Ray's. Uh, and, and this year... It was Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu that he really uh, he has been dedicating himself to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He has competed in uh, you know various different competitions. I don't know where on the scale of we have to pretend that Barack Obama is good at basketball. This is in terms of everybody around him uh, uh, giving him confidence, mm -hmm. but he certainly seems to, by all available metrics, be taking it seriously. Okay, so I've got uh, some stats here. Uh, at number ten, we won't go through all of these, but at number ten. Uh, 1.65 million purchases, $80.5 million, Mike Tyson v. Roy Jones back in 2020. So, so that was a long since retired uh, uh, Mike Tyson mm. fighting Roy Jones. Yeah. The most recent would be uh, Gervonta Davis v. Ryan Garcia, 1.2 million buys at $102.4 million. That was in April of this year. Uh, the highest is from 2015 Mayweather v. Pacquiao, 401 uh, excuse me 410 million dollars 4.6 purchase so that would be the number one that was a long 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 anticipated fight that happened about 10 years after it should have <laughs> so it wasn't great but still the interest in it was so high uh but if you look right below there the second highest grossing is conor mcgregor and that was kind of a joke that was not a yeah but it's not an influencer like where does, you're right where does logan paul i i just like Logan Paul didn't even make the list. Did Logan not Paul in the top ten? Yeah, Mayweather Paul did not make that list. No, not okay. in the top ten. But also, I don't know. I mean, and 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 so the other side of it, and and uh, a point to you in that category that uh, there are no influencers that have made the top ten. But I think if you if when when you said the Logan Paul number, it was around, it was over, uh, of. Uh, a, a pretty significant number for buy rates. It just didn't make the top 10. Yeah. It was $50 for that. Uh, and I, I says it says over a million purchases, which is not enough to beat the 1.6 at the bottom here, but gotcha. Um, so it could have, it could have nipped at, at the, at the bottom of this list here, but, um, uh, that being it, said, but it did generate a lot of the fame of crossover uh, media and, and c content. And I would trends. say if this happened, you're not only getting coverage in the sports world, which would uh, erupt into a minor tizzy because something that would in no way be a true athletic contest at the highest uh, end would be getting as much attention, but it would certainly be something that would be covered on business. It would be, you know, good morning America level coverage because it would be that i agree unique. i i i that is a factor that who, who i think that if i don't know as long as the preview price is like 50 dollars or whatever that it, it will be a thing people will hear about and go okay but i don't know that i think if it's because the average person is like oh i want to oh yeah. 50 bucks f these guys would yeah. you uh, mm. andrew would you would you be settling in uh uh in in your uh in in your home for a uh zuck musk Fifty dollar oh, pay per view. I'm not, a, not at all comfortable with this at all. Not at all. I I just I have a lot of respect for martial arts for fighting professional fighters. It's also a very brutal thing. It's yes. a very thing like mm -hmm. this. I I don't know what it says about us when we get to the point where these guys actually go in to do in and, and and not in if it was a charity match and they were friends. Awesome. Yeah. If but Musk was it, like it also is. a known fighter and it felt like they were doing an exhibition or like something friendly but it definitely it does would be out that. of class it would be that like that's what it would be also i don't think that it would be in any way a 
cage fight or an MMA fight. The reason why everybody does influencer boxing is because it's very hard if you are not a professional boxer to like knock somebody out or or uh, uh, hurt your you know hurt your opponent to a point where mm. they would be you know significant issues. In MMA, you can like a, an untrained person can do something very very dangerous and like you know break so, things. Well, I I think for for Musk, he's got a big size advantage, so I think that the, what's going to work for him, I don't know. I just. I'm not comfortable with this. Yeah. It, I, I, I think that's, I mean, I'm not really into boxing or mixed martial arts, com, competi com, competitive combat really at all. Um, because, really? I saw you as that kind of guy, Bryce. <laughs> because it, yeah, no, I thought you were a real, like, you know, a, a, a pre-Dana White UFC, <laughs> like, uh, you know, a Royce Gracie fan. <laughs> but but I, I think with, uh, you know, competitive combat you have kind of a bloodlust hurdle to get over probably for uh, you know across um across demographics right we there have been you know we talked about the 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 logan paul or jake paul who was that both of them uh, because both of them you know those are those especially when they happened were some of the biggest guys uh on social media on the internet what have you um but i do think there's probably a big gap between those folks as audience and what I see as the people who buy pay-per-views, who even know what pay-per-views are, let alone have a credit card and are adults and can buy one. Um, All right. Well, there we go. Mm, there we go. It is certainly a weird concept. And uh, we will see where it goes because yeah. uh, I, I don't think it, there is a snowball's chance in hell that it goes anywhere beyond them barking at each other on their various different platforms. But Considering the reported rumors that uh, <laughs> Facebook is ready to uh, to unleash a a, a a Twitter clone, oh uh, sure, you know it is it is interesting that it is happening now for a bunch of different reasons. It, can can we touch on that briefly? The uh, the uh, activity pub uh, semi scandal going on, the idea that uh, Meta slash Facebook slash Instagram will make a Twitter like service built on the activity pub protocol that powers things like mastodon and would effectively plug those new services or programs into mastodon and it's kind of decentralized uh, federated sort of system mm -hmm. there's a lot of of folks who run servers saying like well if if instagram connects up to mastodon then we are going our our instance is going to preemptively block the that instance yeah uh so Let's create this open federated system yeah. that anybody can plug into regardless of whatever. Facebook. Oh no. I'm like, no. Like, like, um, I don't use Facebook. I don't really I feel go on Instagram for like a minute a week and then I shut it down. Like I just can't handle it. But if you're trying to be open, open means open. Yeah. Open means if you're saying that no, we're gonna pick and choose, you're not open. You're not open. I mean, the, the the greatest hope for any kind of open protocol is that it gets massive, massive, massive adoption from leading players. Yeah. Uh, you know that that is that is the hope. Uh, uh, I know, mm -hmm. talking to our friend uh, Colleen, who has worked at at both Facebook and YouTube, one of the biggest things that she wanted to do was leverage the leadership that that she had and, and she knew with other video people to get open source video codecs. Uh, it involved in in some in the highest levels there, and that's the goal. The goal is to to have that. If you believe in this, then you want the greatest adoption because you want it to rub off on any other subsequent platforms that are going to be more closed. That at the very yeah. least, you are introducing an expectation of openness uh, with the consumer base. And so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, a, a mastodon politics is something that I you know inter inter uh, server. Politics. I can only imagine that they exist. I, I do not know enough to follow it. Mm. Uh, as for Facebook creating a Twitter clone, uh, consider myself my, my, myself shocked that Facebook would try to clone a popular service. Uh, uh, boy, that what a an upset. vulnerable service. Oh, yeah. Dear, oh yeah. I mean, that that would be new for them. Yeah. Normally, they <laughs> only clone ones that are doing really, really well. They they try to rip those off. But uh, no. But that that's yeah. that's been their move. With, uh, taking the snark out of it, like. They see what is succeeding, and then they try to integrate stuff like that into their own 
products. What I found interesting is that they were looking at this as something that would be a part. Like it would be its own app in the way that Instagram is its own app apart from Facebook. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, um, I, I do like, I, I don't think, like the, oh, no, go ahead. Oh, I, um, I, I don't like the fact that I had to like use my Facebook account with my Oculus. I'm not really excited to embrace anything else they put out, but I fully support their right to create stuff. And if it's an open network, if people are going to say, we're going to shut you out because that's not, that's not open. It is certainly at least uh, diminishing the value of those servers that choose to do, to be in this pact, right? That say we're going to yeah. be the non, we're in the non meta pact, but then, you know, if meta adds a billion users to the activity pub, pub protocol, mm -hmm. uh, is it, theirs or is it yours it, you know it's like it would make it more useful it probably would make it more useful for people who are using that yeah you know network so that's the thing too and it's it's you know, they want to you know i don't know yeah uh strange strange stuff yeah social media it feels like uh it feels it feels like we're ready for a new one i'm ready for a new one a new social media i'm ready for a new one yeah i don't i think i so, got enough I never replaced I, Twitter, I guess. We say, and then we get a thing. Uh, I downloaded the Apple Vision SDK last night. This okay. is the, the development environment. And if you want to develop applications for their new Vision device, their spatial reality headset. So I got that and played around with that a little bit. And, uh, you know, I can make screens in a virtual 3D space computer. So there's that. I can do that now. Uh, but... It is interesting to sort of think about, look at what mobile did to computing. Look what mobile did yeah. to computing. Once things were in your phone and once we sort of optimized around this sort of small screen, this sort of thing, Facebook, these other things became popular. I'm not saying that we're going to be using visions the same amount of time that we use our phones. I'm not saying we're not either. But I do think that way apps, things like this, and I think their spatial reality, the idea of putting these things into your environment and not a virtual one is a very, very interesting approach because we've seen it attempted before. But when you imagine the idea that like I'm sitting here, I've got two displays, but if I have these, if I can have these things on and forget that I'm on there, that I could have infinite number of displays and you two could be sitting, you know, across from me or whatever what does that mean? What is, you know, what is that content? What is that? So, you know, what is a show store network like that where I could just say, let's get four friends together. I think there may be, this is like my prediction. You know, th this is the, this is the startup that will create and somebody will do it. Somebody will make, and then three years from now, four years from now, we'll remember we had this conversation mm -hmm. and it's, it's literally going to be a bunch of quick kind of cool games, like walk about golf and things like this. And it's like a channel that you just pop in and say, Hey, who's free. And we've seen versions of this in stream. We've seen versions of this in other places, but literally just pulling that thing out kind of thing and be like, hey, uh, I'm going to tell my friends I'm available and I'm willing to have a conversation, play a game or do whatever. Who wants to do this? Mm -hmm. And then, boom, you know, you're teleported into an environment or everybody teleports into your living room and then you do it. And for VR, you know, having been a gaming first platform pretty much the whole time, uh, you're going to have, uh, in terms of, I don't know, the available developer pool, um, have people who are used to making, uh, you know, experiences, used to making games and sandboxes, maybe more so than making apps or, or, or things that are designed specifically for productivity. Um, but I, I think it was interesting that when they announced the Vision Pro, you know, you only saw a little bit of gaming and not none of it was vr style gaming um i i think they very so intentionally itself, wanted assuming. wanted to get away from that yeah I, I i don't think they wanted to put themselves in the same category as the uh the quest, quest and I, I don't think that they wanted they, they wanted to say no that's fine you have gaming we'll eventually do really really good games but yeah they, you, they, you 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 guys uh, 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 sell your your uh, headset based on that. We want to sell our headset based on this is a revolution in this experience. 
And, and to be clear, when they showed their demo of the App Store, they showed Rec Room as a totally immersive VR environment. And yeah. so we know at least the planning is that all oh, that's coming. But yeah, they just they didn't want it to look like an Oculus Quest commercial. They didn't want it to look like that. They wanted it to be their own thing. And it was weird because like we talked about this in the previous episode, how Zuckerberg said, ah, I didn't. When you watch people's vision, it's isolating. Everybody's by themselves and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, like that's not the Apple commercials I saw and the stuff like that's the quest stuff and then it's or you're in a meeting you know like quest yes. is i'm playing a game or yeah i'm in a meeting yeah i mean i think there's right. a very very specific reason why the first apple commercial was a dad using it and the child was able to interrupt mm. yeah like that's very very intentional because they do want you to believe we're making your world better we're not hijacking you to a virtual world like you can, you know, you can, you can, you can tune out a little bit if, if you want, but guess what? We're always going to be, we're, we're going to default to the real world being allowed to pull you out. So how, how much of the SDK did you go through, Andrew? Did you, how, and, and did you learn anything uh, maybe that we hadn't already seen announced for the vision? No, I mean, just you, you got to see a little bit more about how like sort of the windows are arranged, how the apps are structured. There's a little thing they didn't talk about, which is, there's a little tiny, I can try loading it. And if we want to get ambitious here, but there's a little arrow that you plug, like a little blue arrow, I mean, a white arrow on a blue circle that you press. And that pops opens a menu that you can click to get like the main menu and whatever. There's some little things in there for like how the controls work. The interface I thought was actually pretty nice for the simulator where you can select where you're going to point, where you can move around. The development environment to create it in, it's just, if you're familiar with developing in Swift UI, which is just a framework for Swift, where it's 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 pretty straightforward. Um, it's pretty easy. I loaded in like a photo into the, took a, opened up the browser and opened up, you know, the weird things, you know, site, whatnot. So it's not, you know, I, I think that the, the challenge is with any cool tool is the tools dropped in front of you. And then you're like, oh, uh, what do I do? You know, and I think that I, I, I kind of decided oh, I'll play around to see what this can do. And then I'm going to go away from it and then think about what I want to build. Because right now, if you're just sort of building traditional apps, you're just going to be building flat apps. Yeah. Versus yeah. Immersive stuff. Because, yeah, even developers presumably won't have their hands on a unit uh, or at least a publicly available unit until, you know, early next year. So you kind of have everyone in this mode for the next, what, six plus months of making apps in simulation all you know more or less only making it in this sdk or the vision simulator app that they've got here um i i wonder what if there will be any sort of uh friction in that transition between developers making something and then actually using it full time for for deeper development uh, does it seem like the simulators gives you a good sense of 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 what the right target is to hit things like that yeah, I think I think you know people have been creating video games and stuff using Unity and 3D games for years in this. I think I think that the the simulator is going to be a good you know will be a good idea. I think really I think a lot of you know really good immersive stuff you're going to be building inside of Unity, and then this is just going to be a good way to see how it all interacts with that. Mm. Um, but uh, it is, does give you an idea of like how I mean everything seems natural, everything made sense. I wasn't going why did they do that you know. Yeah. Uh, well, that's that's interesting. I don't know. I I what is the what Justin? Yeah. You get a Vision Pro. What is your killer app? What's your Halo killer app for the Vision Pro? To be yeah. totally honest, it's like I'm fascinated to find out uh, uh, what I what I think it might be. Yeah. Is like email or word processing. Or something like that, like something kind of that that feels more mundane than than you might think. But you just find, oh man, I can go through this so much faster uh, in this world than mm -hmm. uh, than than looking at my I, my laptop and and be it through like being able to process up. Like I can see a world where in emails just like map 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 is faster than mousing over archive yeah Next like message. yeah click boom load 
like if I'm just able to like like uh, uh, and also I mean the the thing that I really really truly am fascinated by with this is what is the what are the true ramifications of eye tracking of you being able to just with your eyes focus on something and have that the thing that you are interacting with uh because I I think it'll it'll be a slight learning curve but if it works in the way that they say that it works that means you're able to just move so much faster in this world than you are when you're using brain to hand to move hand to click like th those these these are a lot of steps that you don't think of as a lot of time that can add up and and you can feel the wind at your face if it if it does work like that there's i've been as if i've been talking about i've been really into like memory palace techniques yeah. and studying this stuff it like i just built built an app using gpt4 to help me like record my memory palaces and do active recall incredibly effective to be able to build that kind of stuff whatever but part of it is too is that and i'm getting to a point here i swear uh like i decided to do like the tour of my house and to save that it's, and it's like a 55 they're like 55 stops right and I'm amazed that I can recall that super easily right now, every single one of those things in there, but it's not too amazing because it's, it's a space that I know of. It's a familiar space that I am aware of. And I just have to know each stop. I did that with the magic castle. I have like 26 stops on the first floor of there. When you think about what does spatial computing really mean when you start building applications and building things that are in your physical space, because I've thought about like how, if I want to build an app is like, can I, I could have my code for my app. I can have a virtual device here. I can have my server up there and I can see this. I can bring in the audience and just these, these other things. When we start to put, we, we've only really, we haven't really touched upon this because VR devices have mostly been game centric, but we have not really played with the 3D interface and what that will mean because our brains are really good at picking up spatial information. And what does that mean? Because I think about if I have, if I'm working on a project and I have two screens, but I'm like, oh, I'm going to put a screen up here that's for some other thing. I'm going to put this projects over here. I'm going to have a list of things here, much like we do real face space. But like if we start doing a like 3D space, like you think about your pro your podcast set up there, Bryce, mm -hmm. you know, like what would it be like if you if because I look at you've got a control board to your right. You've got all these other things. I and like then it's five monitors in front of me. I got three different mice. Yeah. Yeah. And like that control board is a great example of years ago somebody would say oh we can just all do it with one screen and you're like no no i don't I, I need my control board here because i need to know i reach my hand my muscle memory i need to know i reach my hand over here this button's there i'm not clicking through things but we've been con we've been constrained by screens we've been constrained mm -hmm. by that space and apps have to live in that space apps no longer have to live into that space before you know, and that's what's fascinating to me to think about is like, oh, like, what is it? What does it really mean when you can just an app can be anything? Yeah, I saw uh, someone, uh, I don't know if it was Reddit or, or somewhere else asking. Uh, uh, so when will when will someone make a calculator app that just sits on the table? That just when you need a calculator? Oh, it's on the table. That's yeah. that's, that's where you know where it is. You don't have to. Whip, 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 dit, 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 dit. Like you just find it and you go to it uh, or you bring it to you. You call it to you. You, you know, Thor hammer anything in the world that's not in front of you. I don't know. There, there, it's, it's tough because we are so screen focused right now. We have been very screen focused for a long time. Um, and I, even, even right now, I like, I don't, I don't even know. Like, I think you're right, Andrew. Like, something like the specific workflow workstation that I'm at, I understand as a 3D space. Maybe we need to think of it something like a card, card, the interior of a car design, right? You need to be able to focus on what you're doing, but also touch things and make small. I, don't, hmm. I mean, I think we, we are going to be coming up with a new visual language for stuff like this. Should it, again, yeah. should, 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 if, if, if. But uh, the idea of strataing out apps that are by focus or function some should be right in front of me some should always be permanently on the side like you mentioned with the calculator some should always be 
if if a surface a desk uh, is is available they should always be there and they should always return there um it's it's this kind of stuff that i think unlike with the watch i think the last time that we were talking about like the watch i was like I'm, i've still been disappointed that we have not seen a class of like watch specific apps and i i mentioned uber as as an example of like almost 99 percent of my interactions with uber which are hit a button a car comes and gets me i should be able to do on the watch yeah. like that's it should be my uber button i go bing and that's it uh but even that we have not still, seen it yeah, right? right and that and that's, that's because there's a lot of constrictions in terms of battery power uh, uh gps uh, uh yeah. that that kind of stuff processing with this, it appears as if they have launched it at a point where it's powerful enough that we are going to see a lot of different types of apps that are specifically designed for this world. And the limitations on what they are is a far more broad and exciting world. Mm. Want to know what else is a broad, exciting world? The world of Patreon.com. Oh. Okay. slash weird things that was not my guess patreon.com slash weird things you doubting thomas <laughs> is the place where you can go ahead and support this program i don't know there right now you get the after things podcast as well mm -hmm. or anybody else I, guys mm -hmm. a custom rss feed like look at that you just Anything. put that in the uh in the, in the pod catcher of your choice baby it's the way to roll i don't know there right now patreon.com slash weird things i was thinking of europa so let's talk about the uh, horrible tragedy that just happened this week with the submarine, Woof. the Titan. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, yeah. The talk of uh, our modern media landscape, fractured though it might be, uh, an extraordinary story, an extraordinarily tragic story. Um, you know, there's so much. I, I, I almost feel like, uh, uh, where, where do we want to start uh, with 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 this, I mean, aside, of course, from the uh, recognition of the fact that you know people lost their lives, and that is that is very important. Yeah, yeah, I I, I think anywhere is sort of fine as an entry point into it. I, I think that you know the the you know my take is a it it sounds like this company didn't know what they're doing. It sounded like they took all sorts of crazy risks. It sounded like this was really a half baked thing. You know, James Cameron had pointed out that like in 50 years of deep sea submersible research and exploration there hasn't been a loss of life until yeah. now and that you know within the, apparently within the community this company people were nervous about and anxious about and according to a whistleblower this thing really wasn't designed to do this so it just sounds like a horrific thing but it is you know i'd, I'd say that frustrating is some of the weird you know eat the rich sort of mentality well let's there, let's 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 pause that for a second because i do want to talk about the technical stuff before we get into the conversation around it and i have a lot to say about the conversation around it um the, the the tech stuff is fascinating and one of the things that i wanted to do as this first started to break was keep more of an open mind uh, because nobody that i saw that was talking about it at least 72 hours ago uh, what I characterized as uh, submarine experts, uh, uh, much in the same way that they were not uh, 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 virology experts or, or or other stuff, and yet it's all the same people that are making uh, uh, you know very very strident claims. Now that we are here, I just listened to an interview with a man who has been to the South Pole multiple times. He is he is one of the. Uh, a you know small group of people that does a lot of this extreme tourism. Uh, uh, his personal thing was going to the point of inaccessibility on all continents, which is essentially the point of a continent that is as farthest away from all water. Hmm. And so he's done it everywhere. You know, uh, uh, Africa apparently was the most personally hairy because he was going into areas that are hotly disputed with many, many different uh, uh, oft violent forces uh, vying for it. But he put down a $10,000 deposit with Seagate. And that's the company that that's, ran the sub that ran, that ran the Titan. Yeah. And he said, you know, first things first, uh, he was not comfortable with some of the things that were coming out of there, that they were missing deadlines on, on stuff. Uh, he then, he dropped out, but he knew other people that stayed in 
they were set to go do their dive in 2019. They arrived in Newfoundland and then were told that it was canceled while they were there, not because the sub wasn't ready, but because the company had not booked the boats to go out to take the sub down. Ooh, uh, that's uh, that's not that's not rocket science. That's a, a an email. That is that is organization. Yeah. And when you are talking about organization, when on the other side of it, there is a life and death scenario, then that matters a lot more. In one of the interviews I saw with James Cameron, he was pointing out that, look, they made a design decision to use a carbon fiber hull. That is something that he personally is greatly against. Uh, he has built his own, I believe, out of steel. Um, and he said part of the insidious element of carbon fiber is that it will work. And it did. I think they did 12 dives with this. I, I heard it was 80 some. Yeah. I, I heard I it was, was a lot. I, I had heard, they, yeah. Maybe, but it, it did not sound like they were making a new one of these. But he was saying that, that that's the insidious part is that with carbon fiber, it does take wear and tear in a way that steel doesn't. According to him, you can, you can, re, you can cycle steel hundreds, if not thousands of times. Mm -hmm. uh, with carbon fiber, you don't know when it's going to fail yeah. and yeah. that is ultimately what happened is is you know what he called it insidious that it lulls you into a false sense of security that oh no it's this is fine and you know it, it appears that the ceo of this company was of the belief that carbon fiber was something that could hold up and he paid for it with his life along with everybody else on that capsule yeah um, it's it's disconcerting because it precisely that that has historically been the problem with carbon fiber is to, to really understand what's going on you need to sort of x-ray it to see what's going on inside of there and i doubt that they were going through an x-ray in every square inch and when you're about to have a catastrophic failure like i the, the moment it was lost i you know i told roshni like i don't hate to say it but like they're you know like they're gone like yeah. this this is this sounds like a structural failure which is just going to be a, you know, when I, you know, hear like articles like, oh, so-and-so talks about what their survivors are going through right now as the air runs out. I'm like, I don't know for sure, but they ain't alive. Like, yeah. like this, this just was the, the design of it, whatever. It's like, if you asked to say what was the most likely scenario. Yeah. Um, the, the, the Occam's there, razor on it is a structural collapse. Yeah. It, it was not, it, it being, you know, floating around like, uh, you know, so much detritus around and, the Titanic. And and there were enough, uh, maybe probably circumstantial, but enough enough little bullet points to go, oh, they, if if it wasn't uh, an implosion, we probably would have seen them right now, by now, right? The, the, uh, the ballast, right, was supposed to dissolve after 24 plus hours, so presumably they would have floated and, and any number of little things yeah. that, like... Th we might have had something different. I think it was very interesting, um, and I'm sure there was no small amount of geopolitical <laughs> considerations in, involved, that uh, it took the Coast Guard yesterday saying, oh, yeah, we are pretty sure we heard it implode was it, immediately. Was it, was it the Coast Guard? What it was is there's the Navy has, has microphones throughout the ocean to listen for other sub, to listen for enemy subs and stuff, and apparently they had heard yeah. And a sound and implosion or explosion. Yeah. And then there was, but then there was also the account of hearing, and it's been spun into this. Well, they knew, but why did they do the search rescue? Like, well, there's a one lot. team at the Navy that listened to stuff, heard a thing that sounded like an explosion. There could also be like an air tank on the external air tank exploding, whatever. Yeah. It's not like, it, it just, I, I people kind of like. And, but, and if that timeline holds up, they wouldn't have even known that there was a missing sub. Uh, you know, presumably that. Uh, oh no, that that they knew they by you know we the search and rescue been going on. Like I I believe that people within the Navy had a very good idea what probably happened. Yes. No. I, yes. Ago. Yes. Yes. But I, but like what I'm saying is, if someone was listening for that bang right you when were it you were you were saying contemporaneously yes. like in in that in moment, that moment you would have been you wouldn't have even thought there's a missing sub. The sub wasn't I... famous yet. I, is your argument? It, but what I heard was they, that it blew up pretty much right when they lost contact with it. But yeah, and they they 
they keep really good track of what goes down there because a submarine and a surface ship and this stuff and what's going on there, like, and that's part of it is it's classified stuff, but they have, uh, you know, for context, my grandfather years ago, back in the eighties worked for a tech company that built the sauna boys, which are those things that they drop down into the ocean to, you know, pick up the movements of things. And so we've got sensors all over. We've got sensors all over for picking stuff up and we have tools to recognize what they are. And so somebody was somewhere there going like, well, that didn't sound good. But to your point, they don't know specifically, they would have known like, yeah, it sounded like something happened, but again, classified info, whatnot. And yeah. you don't want to say, no, nope, call off the search guys because we heard an explosion because it could be wrong. And so there, there's, I, I just saw somebody on Twitter is like, ah, that was all, we're being gaslighted. Like, no, like, they didn't know for sure that it, that if, if it had been like an external tank or something else that had popped and they said call off the search and they were alive, we'd look stupid. Because well, yeah, well, because oh, God forbid on, they on. get that wrong. Yeah, God but for- also look, <laughs> they, they they the 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 reporting on it at least is that they informed the people that were looking for the sub immediately. Like like it's not like the people that needed to know about that information knew about that information as well. Yeah. That was not enough to call off the search. They continued to search. They went for a few days, but there's a reason why outside mm-hmm. the window of there being any way for them to have survived underwater, they called it pretty quickly because they they knew what it was. I think it would be yeah. it would be horrible if they if they called it off. What what I find fascinating, and we can use this as a gateway into talk about the conversation about this. Is our concept and expectation on news delivery like this thing went missing and within hours after the official search being called off, we knew about this information. And yet the the uh, uh, the commentary is, well, we should have known sooner or or they knew earlier. And it's like, like what all this happened in 72 hours. Like, like what, what? What do we expect it, about I mean, about knowing this it, kind of I stuff? Mean, I I agree with your dissent to that, Justin, and also like, there's gonna be hot takes. Like I saw there was an op-ed yeah. in the L.A. Times that was like, people are making fun of the sub and the people in it way too early. To which I said, like, your line, your personal line, or, or the 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 time it takes you to acc- uh, to acclimate to the 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 tragedy happening in the real world is going to be different than everyone else. Screw you for saying like, uh, no one should make fun of it or talk. No, or I'll try say to make that. Life I'll say it. it's not cool. I would say that okay. with there's, you know, you get a 19 year old kid on there. Apparently didn't want to go on there and we're still waiting. I'm like, I mean, yeah, you can say whatever you want, but like, I mean, that I was know. awful. Uh, that, that, that is an awful part of it. I think it is awful, but also like if, if the response is to finger wag at other people, I, I don't know that that seem that seems equally rushed to to judgment certainly to publish to publication. I, I like uh, uh, welcome to capital T capital uh, D the discourse uh, uh, as we as we have the discourse about this. Um, I found it among the more fascinating Rorschach tests that we've seen recently on the internet, where a thing happens and now. The reason the thing happened has to be our personal political beliefs <sighs> or our personal socioeconomic beliefs. Like that's the reason why this happened. That's what uh, uh, the, 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 the takeaway here is because I look at this Rorschach and I see late stage capitalism or I look at this Rorschach and I see wokeness run amok because of uh, comments by the CEO saying he didn't want to hire 50 something white men or whatever. Like, it's an incredibly newsworthy story. The Titanic, for whatever reason, for over 100 years, has maintained our fascination as Americans and probably humans, right? Uh, we are incredibly fascinated by it to the point where these people lost their lives trying to see it. Uh, for 100 years later, there to be a tragedy at the site of the Titanic, that's going to get a lot of news. And guess what? It's going to get a lot of news, a lot of more news than other things that might have happened uh, uh, that also are tragedies, including other boats sinking with various other people on it around the world. Things that are more common than this. And yes, the fact that some of them were billionaires is part of the newsworthiness of it. Doesn't mean that you have to like it. Doesn't mean that you have to believe that billionaires are good, great, or awful. It means that it is going to be covered more 
because there are fewer of them than there are of us. And, and if a bunch of them, and if a bunch of them die, a lot of people are going to pay attention to it. And so a soccer team gets trapped in a cave in Thailand. It's novel. We talk about that too. Like, exactly. The Peruvian yeah. miner, the, yeah. the miners got captured. Like it, yeah. it, it's a, this is novel. People go like, why don't we this? Like, cause it's, 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 not you know when it's novel, it's novel. I like yeah. I mean, like you look at the you just look at the bullet points of this story. Like at, at sea, you've got deep sea professionals. You got rich guys. You got the guy who owns the boat. They're going to the Titanic. Like you couldn't. Write there's a, a lot, a lot, a lot of men biting a lot of dogs. <laughs> newsworthiness wise, yeah. right? Like there's just a lot of things that are that are happening in the same way that that the miners, in the same way that that the soccer team did and and now all or, or the malaysian plane or something like that yeah. there, there's there's a a lot of things that go into these stories becoming international fascinations bryce i, I will so, disagree with you i do think that the, that the making fun of it discourse was gross i thought it was uh, uh, uh i'm not here to crusade against it but uh i i thought it was uh it was gross it was and 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 yeah. and 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 the, and the what aboutism element of like well like oh well, when when migrants sink we're not uh, uh you know spending this much time I think is is a, a, a lame justification to uh, dance on the watery graves of people in a tragedy. So, and, and Colton, oh, you, you Colton, go ahead, Andrew, because I cut you off. Right but up. yeah, Colton has a question. Says uh, uh, maybe a dumb question. Why can't we pull the Titanic up? That is the title, or that is a subject of a book by Cl Clive Cluster called Raise the Titanic, which is actually a movie, which is kind of amusing, um, where they actually try to do that. But this was before they actually had found the Titanic and where it was in the condition. If you wanted to imagine a environment in which you could preserve it for the longest and stable and whatnot, where it is is fine. It's great. And remember, the Titanic's in multiple pieces. It's spread across the floor of the ocean. And if you tried to raise it, you would damage it. And what to what's the cost and everything else like that? Well, then is somebody going to claim it? Right now, it's kind of in a great place. It's a very difficult to sort of place, but it's, you know, to pull it up, you're going to, you'd have to preserve it and you would have to be able to do great things to go to great efforts to prevent it from rusting because the moment it comes up, it's just going to start to, it'll deteriorate quickly. So it's not economically why raise it too. It's in a very good place. Other than how it originally got there, which was horrible. Make that yeah. very clear. Yeah. yeah. Should uh, be there, but it's there. But uh, 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 if I could go back, like, uh, I, I'm not saying I love all of the humor that people have had about the, the and, and, and let's I be specific. Not, it was eat, eat the rich discourse. The, the, uh, a, a billionaire solution machine was, was the kind of uh, a commentary that I was seeing about this. I mean, uh, ultimately I, I don't, I don't know enough about that specific take to, to, to even, I'm not defending any of that. I just think yeah. there are also better uses of, of our time and publication inches than uh, scolding people for scolding people on the internet, scolding people on the internet because, Oh no, the billions of people that are interconnected, some of them were not on the line that you thought you that you thought there should be, and I agree. I, I, there's a lot of stuff I don't agree with. There's a lot of stuff I I would have would would also think is gross because I'm a human and have my own line. But I, I I like yeah, man, the internet is a hot take machine, and just as hot take as an eat the eat the rich machine is also the well uh, we're all you're, you, 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 you finger finger wagging. But, my finger oh, let's after. back up. Let's back up because like I I'm. I'm not always eager to jump in and defend the LA Times or elsewhere, but <laughs> I, 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 it kind of comes into if somebody says does something that's mean, and I say, hey, that's mean. Am I equally as bad as that person for saying that's mean? I don't think so because, like, to me, you know, there's it's or it's this. The my concern is the desensitization that these people. For many people out there, the people on the sub weren't real. They were characters in a TV show they were watching. And they said these things not realizing they're real human beings. There's real stories. There's real narratives there. And that's the thing that, like, I do think we need to comment on that. And I think that we need to be introspective about that, too, because I think news organizations are very guilty of this, too, of ignoring the fact. I'm like, I'm like I think the problem is, is people think they're watching TV all the time and they say stuff. Like, why is there so much animosity and stuff on social media because people aren't real they don't think treat people as real and so i think like yeah let's comment on that like 
this is real. This is a real thing that happened. This is not an episode. This is not just this this live TV show we watch where they're going to pop up next week. No, they're dead. They're gone. Yes. And that to me, to make a commentary to say, hey, listen, do we need to be, you know, spiking whatever political footballs we have about this right now? I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with calling out that behavior because I don't think we call it out enough. Okay. I, 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 I just think it, it, it gets to this point of, of deciding that uh, we need to, I don't know. As I, I clearly have a very cogent and a well my, decided <laughs> argument yeah, but and no, opinion but on Bryce, but like, to, but, it's like, like for, yeah. for, for me, it's uh, like, okay. remember when we had people didn't want to get vaccinated and people were dying and we got that, mm -hmm. well, it serves them right. It's that same mentality. And it's same thing. As if it's like, you know, somebody who's progressive and supports some issue and something bad happens, then you get conservatives like, well, serves mm -hmm. it. And I don't like that. I don't like that. Whatever side's doing it. And that came from that same sort of space of like, you know, oh, somebody did they give? No, they had uh -huh. it coming. I'm like, ouch! Like that's just that's not a very humane place to be. I guess I just wonder what the next step is on that. Uh, whether it's uh, uh, a new perverse form of 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 publication, a la BuzzFeed, but now it's the ten people we can't believe cross the line, uh, joking about the topic, the the current news. Like, I mean, like that's long been a part of our media ecosystem yeah and it's and lame I'm saying and it stupid can, and boring and it like, can get worse like uh, can, <laughs> oh okay well no like, no no this, like, this is this is this is more more of a journalism take but i agree with you i i it, i mean I, either 100 percent agree that these stories are bad i do think that they were probably at their worst during the uh initial uh uh onset of twitter where I saw many articles when you know there would be a big moment in a basketball game and then some brilliant uh, uh, writer for Deadspin would search the N word and then and and the name of the person who hit the hit the shot and then be like, look at all these people who said the N word about a basketball game last night. And it's like, like, yeah, if you troll a message board, you're going to like with enough people on it, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to find vile stuff. Uh, yes. And, and I think talking about it writ large is one thing civility toward uh, ourselves as we, we continue to colonize these digital spaces. Uh, but I agree with you that if we are going to follow that to an nth degree and just name and shame people who say awful things on, on a forum, that is something that we will find forever. Yeah. I mean, I look, I, I look at this, I guess I'm coming at this from a similar perspective of, of like the fake news machine, right? Like, if you want to push a counter narrative, there is a structure to do so, and a lot of it, it relies on, on having just a hand, just a small number of of data sets across everyone connected on the internet, um, and ultimately, what you get is time being taken away from, uh, from quote unquote the truth with falseness. Um, uh, and and I I just wonder if it's a similar thing with like like yeah we can't we can go through the process of like adjudicating this and 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 all but also it just seems like everybody should just like live and let live to some degree uh uh just there are going to be people who say things you disagree with and think that you didn't like uh, do you think that it's concern trolling a little bit what is you me doing this now like saying like you're allowed to say that it's gross but not like that don't say it in the LA Times. That's too much. Uh, I disagree with the LA Times piece as well. Is is what I say. Like, I think I, I think I think we can all agree that we, <laughs> we've said that since. I you know I I don't I I just don't think I have an answer. But I think also saying the answer is everyone needs to change their habits is probably. Well, it's probably foolhardy, the... right? Yeah, I, mean, I think in, in in any scenario, uh, or in every one of these scenarios that arose from this story, everybody is identifying their themselves to the people for whom they would like to identify themselves, and the people that were saying, "Thank God, here's an efficient way to kill billionaires," uh, while I think it is a cold and callous take that disregards uh actual humans that are that that would could possibly be on this website and seeing this kind of commentary about people that they loved 
they are identifying themselves to other people who uh, uh, you know, believe that we are in a late stage capitalist hellscape and billionaires are actively making their lives bad, right? Agree or disagree with that take. That's who. That's what they're doing. That's why they're making those jokes. They're making those jokes to find that community. Uh, and they don't care about whether or not other people are upset about it because to them, other people being upset about it is the reason why we're in this situation to begin with, comrade. The uh, when when we say yeah. and when Andrew and I say, "Hey, this is gross, and I don't like it, and it's bad," that is us identifying ourselves uh, as people that would like that that dare to believe that saying this we we can be more humane even here in the darkest, deepest reaches of the internet uh, is not I, is I, not is not is not a shame. And I, I make I've made my dumb, callous jokes and stuff like this. And, and I'm I'm that person, too. When something bad befalls somebody, part of me wants to go, well, what did they do to deserve it? You know, but I know that's not good. That's not a good thing. And and I just. You know, I don't. Yeah, not that the L.A. Times is the paragon of virtue and, you know, how to handle things. But like, I, don't, I, 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 I get I get to your point, Bryce, I think singling out nobodies or people like this with hot takes to do stuff is dumb. I just hate that kind of journalism. I don't like this because it's sometimes it's like, well, this person with 12 Twitter followers said this. And it's like, why, why is it? Why are you, you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're elevating somebody. So I, I get that part of it. I just, I just do think if the world was more like you, Bryce, we'd be in a better place, but the world <laughs> is not like you, sure. you know, and people, people, monkey, monkey you do and we have a right to say whatever we want i absolutely believe that but that also means that when you do a thing you know you're going to have an effect on things and you have to think about that so yeah I, yeah I, I mean even uh i don't know like we did we did great night on tuesday and i didn't i i was gonna feel comfortable making jokes about the sub and uh i, I made more it. of that i went further <laughs> Well, I went further than I think the two of you in making a joke about the fact that we weren't going to joke about it. Yeah. And, and I don't begrudge anyone in, involved in, in, you know, in us doing the show in the same way. I hope no one holds it against me that I do. It did make me a little uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, like it is a tragedy. I'm really sorry. It is a, tra like it is a, it is oh. a trauma that will affect the, the families of these people, uh, the people who could relate to it, like it is awful. It is it is a terrible thing. Nothing uh, nothing sharpened my black sense of humor like being a reporter. Yeah. When you're a reporter, and, and especially when you're reading about the worst things in the world that are happening: death, rape, maiming, robberies, uh, uh, people that are suffering what will hopefully be among the worst days Zombies of their entire popping life. popping out of the ground in the ground. Exactly. I mean, like... <laughs> Tim and, Robinson is... Uh, <laughs> yeah. And that was the day the skeletons came to life. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, like, that's a... The, a coping mechanism is, is making those jokes. And, uh, you know, I think that there are times where you want to do it you know, context matters, platform matters. If you're Absolutely. doing it with a few friends, it's different than saying it, uh, saying it uh, on, on, on a platform because the people that would be affected by it, that would be the most hurt by it are less likely to hear it. If it's, if it's in, in, in private than it is in public. Maybe, uh, may, maybe this is all, uh, uh, and and this is not meant to deflect or be a rationalization, but but you know maybe this is part partly a sign of weaknesses of the internet and our social media infrastructure, right? Every website kind of wants to be the public square and is putting everyone into public. But even as we talked about the Mastodon stuff, you've got people who are using an open public platform who are kind of upset about someone else using the open and public you know infrastructure that they've set up here. Um, and saying, oh, but not that, open, not that kind of open, not that open. Um, and, and so it's, it's, huh. it's, 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 it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird thing for, for me, it comes down to, I'm at my worst when I forget that there are people are people. When I forget that people are, people. I'm at my worst when that happens. And I look at, and I think the internet is at its worst when it dehumanizes and it treats people as others them or because I don't know it's often done out of, sometimes out of spite, 
sometimes because these screens are the same screens that we watch Game of Thrones. These are the same screens that we watch TV. These are the same screens that we we interact with all additional stuff in our world, and and it just becomes another narrative, and they become other characters, and we forget that some characters are actually real and some are not, and that you know the idea that would you would you say this to those people to their face? Most people would not, or to the families. No, you wouldn't. Why? Well, because then they become real, and so you know, uh, in the which trials of J.K. Rowling that came out a few months ago, uh, Megan Phelps Roper, who was from the Phelps Roper family that uh, runs the Westboro Baptist Church, is looking back. She is no longer a part of that community, but she was looking back on her youth being a part of it and how easily her and her family were very sure of the fact that, yes, they were othering people, and they were doing things, if you're unfamiliar with the Westboro Baptist Church, like uh, routinely uh picketing the funerals of veterans like doing things that were outwardly there to draw attention because they were behaving like the worst elements of society and they were saying among the most hurtful things that they could say to the people that were in the most pain and the reason why was because they believed greatly that if they did not do it even more people would burn in hell forever and that they let their beliefs subsume the humanity of the moment. And she, I think fairly eloquently on that show talks about her personal pathway of understanding, coming to grips with, with what it meant to think about a more immediate level of empathy. And so the only thing that this really taught me, uh, this, this particular situation is that there are a lot of people for whom still have that lesson, like that, that they, they're on the other side. They're on the Westboro Baptist Church side where their beliefs matter more than the immediate empathy. Because in this case, at least the eat the rich element, they believe that the world needs to be immediately course corrected because we have a predatory financial system. Um, and and that's why they they relish in making really, really, really gross jokes because... And they, and they hope that the people hear about it because maybe that'll wake the world up, much in the same way that the Westboro Baptist Church hoped that we would follow a more godly path that could save all, save all of our everlasting souls. I mean, I, I think there's also... I don't disagree that there's probably a good number of people who, who are doing it with that intention, but I also think that there's just an anonymous element to it. I think there's just a kind of 4 chaniness to it, like... Yeah, there's a text box, and it doesn't take anything to hit enter on the text box. You don't have to put your social security number in. You can be a Twitter egg and say all of these awful things. Um, I, but you know, if, if this were just Princess Diana jokes or something like that, uh, like you know, then it's one thing. Then it's like, oh boy, isn't there a tasteless element of of society? Like that happens. Like there, there is to me. That's a cruft of just a, a an, an event, right? Uh, when when you're doing it with a political motivation, which is primarily the stuff that I saw, at least maybe okay. this is my own anecdotal thing, but most of it was, ha ha ha, lol. Uh, 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 you know, we finally found a good billionaire. They're at the bottom of the sea, like that kind of stuff. Sure. Um, you know, cause, cause, uh, uh, yeah, well, it's it 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 really, it really is awful. I, I especially in those few days when you know, maybe they were still a lot, you know, the, just the idea and following it really was. Uh, Man, I, I hoped, awful. you know, but I just, <laughs> having been on a submersible under the ocean and knowing mm -hmm. all the things that can go wrong, uh, and in this case, uh, one not quite as sophisticated as that, yeah. you're like, eh, you know, especially not, never, not, never been in one like that at that depth or anything like that. Oh, um, I want to say something, though, which uh, I want to, you know, we're getting into the era of space tourism. Yep. And one of the things that if you kind of go like, we're going to see more cool stuff and dangerous stuff and things like that done. The thing that is uh, helpful is that the problem with this system, if I was to, you know, uh, have designed things for underwater, not to the scale of, let's say, James Cameron, but I've had to design underwater systems and things like this to 
for my Shark Week thing and some other stuff I've been involved with, it is a very complex thing. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for marine engineering because it is just, it is way more complicated than it sort of seems. It's not just keeping things from bursting. You have to deal with things like, does this, what will happen at depth with this uh, seal that I have, this rubber seal or whatever, when it starts to cool and contract? There's all these sort of things that come in that gets very complex. Um, one of the things that I'm a big fan of is building things that are autonomous, building things that are autonomous, building a sub that can, because when I saw that and they had that janky controller, I'm like, cool. Um, this is me that every time it did a dive, there had to be a human being on board and they couldn't do like 20 test dives at depth or lower with automated. And I think you should be building automated systems now entirely do that to test it because one advantage that SpaceX has is by the time they put astronauts on the Falcon 9, yeah, the Falcon 9 had done 100 launches, had yeah. done 100 launches, right? And it did have explosions, but they had a very good idea about the reliability of that. The first time the space shuttle ever carried people was the first time <laughs> the space shuttle ever took off. Yeah. And, the, you know, the SLS, you know, we've got, you've seen, like, you know, what's been going on with... Uh, you know, Boeing's Orion, the Starliner capsule and these other stuff. And just, you realize, holy cow, like what's really helpful is to test this stuff a lot. You know, there's going to be this planned mission, this dear moon mission where they're going to send some, you know, celebrities around the moon on a starship at some point. Uh, by the time that happens, in theory, uh, starship will have done hundreds of launches. Yeah. Wow. And that's really critical. So I think that my skepticism for systems comes into have people, has this system been able to be tested reliably consistently over and over without people? If it has, then I feel good about it. If the, you know, if it's only, I don't know how many dives this thing went on, but like, yeah, carbon fiber, things like this. There's still a reason why like the Navy's not building carbon fiber subs. There's still a reason why this hasn't been adopted more widely as well known as it is. And we saw, that very well could be who knows. We still don't know really what the cause was, but yeah. Yeah. Hey, do we have any picks? Uh, I got a, I got a pick for you. Go. Uh, I uh, picked up uh, one of the hot new games of the year. It's the new final fantasy. They're making another one of them. Can you believe it? Mm. Uh, uh, this is, this is probably n not what you will like think a Final Fantasy game should play like it is very action focused. You pretty much just control one guy and your other party members just go do their own thing. Um, there's a lot of real time combat. You're not stopping and making turns. Um, but what you get in, in, ref in, in return for that is see so far a pretty gripping uh, high fantasy drama. Um, you know, you're, you're kind of in this, uh, continent where there are big crystals and those there are kingdoms that have built up around those crystals and the kingdoms are fighting and then some of the people turn into the into big monsters and the, then they're part of the the politicking of it all um it it looks really really nice it's on the playstation 5 uh it, it looks really nice there's plenty of great music my like only bummer with it is that i've not played more than like an hour and a half of it so far um and so i'm still like in all the tutorial stuff like Ah, oh, did you know you can buy things at a shop? <laughs> Go to page two. Well, Bryce, you can sell things at the shop too. <laughs> you know, there's some well, some little things like that. Yeah, I mean, as a game gets involved, and yeah, you know, this is what Final Fantasy. What we're at like number three now, right? It's number four. It's right? sixteen. Uh, Wait, sixteen? Yeah. Uh, yeah, which is really uh, more than sixteen. Way more than sixteen too. Yeah, uh, it is. Uh, I got a weird numbering system. <laughs> It is very, it, it's hard because too, like the, the danger, like creating a, a another edition in a video game series is in some ways even more complex than if you write a new book in a book series because you need to build your audience. And a lot of your audience are new to gaming and you don't just want to keep selling to the people that bought it before, bought it before because you will drop off. So it's hard because you have some people that have been you know, much later on in it and are come in earlier on and understand, you know, uh, the rules, how these things work, et cetera. But Bryce, if I played this, 
I wouldn't have a clue what to do, you know? Sure. Yeah. And I, I and remember I, all I, I know Final Fantasy is I saw the dumb movie with my then girlfriend back in the day. In the <laughs> that that was movie horrible. was okay. That movie was okay. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. And, and, you know, uh, uh, a friend of mine who's played further says like, yeah, once you get all out of all of that, it doesn't happen. You're fine. It's not a big, deal. Oh my God. Do you know when the first final Fantasy came out? I think I do. Justin, do you have a guess? Uh, no, uh, 89. Yeah. I, I want to say 89 or 88. 87. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. 87. Bryce, is it older than you? Uh, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. By a couple <laughs> <of years. laughs> You're playing a video game that was invented before. I can't even wrap my head around that. You know, like to me, that's like me watching the honeymooners now and it's still being on air. Like that's yeah. just. It like there, there that, that you live in a world where a lot of the content and the mediums and the franchises that you participated in predate you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, any number of, I mean, heck, uh, uh, SpongeBob. SpongeBob is like still the most popular cartoon on TV right now, and that show is like 15 years old. There are teenagers who are younger than the idea of SpongeBob SquarePants, but, which is. But to our point too, it would have been impossible for you to have started the franchise when it started because it existed. I just, I'm sorry, I'm still. My head is trying to wrap around the fact that Final Fantasy is this. It, they, they can you get that much excitement, that much enthusiasm for a thing that is so old. Yeah. So no, I used to play Pong. You know how I played Pong back in the day? I had to. I flipped the switch on my little game console to switch to Pong to then play Pong on my. I had like three games on that thing. Uh, oh wow! And, and in terms of like, uh, in that same line. Uh, it is different than what you m other what you would think of Final Fantasy from other games. You know, it's not t it's not turn based. It's not a tactics game, um, but they really do a lot. To Controversial? Are people upset about that or not? Really, gamers but, gamers don't like change. They, well, and with Final Fantasy, they've been moving away from that for like the past ten years. So yeah. people are already kind of used to that even. Um, but there's something really cool that I think I'm really excited about. So. Uh, you know how Amazon has the X-ray feature when you mm -hmm. pause? They'll say, hey, these are the characters you're looking at, and this is fun fun facts. So Final Fantasy 16 has active time lore. And so whenever you're playing, uh, including during a cutscene, you hold the touchpad on the, on the controller, the game pauses, and a menu pops up. And it's this is the look. This is where you're at. These are these are the people on screen. These are the factions they're talking about. These are like the type of people. These are bearers and monsters and all that stuff. Yeah. So you can and those update as you play the game. So you're constantly able to say like, what was that? Oh, it was that. What was that? Oh, yeah. it was that. And you know exactly what you're supposed to know, um, which is major. I've played I've played enough multiple Final Fantasy games alone where I've stopped playing at one point and try to come back and don't remember what's going on. And then you have to start over or look it up or whatever. I, it's just, it's, it, it's, uh, it's really clever. So uh, big ups, Final Fantasy 16. FF 16, baby. What do you got? I'm reading the uh, Wikipedia on why they called it Final Fantasy. And mm -hmm. uh, they liked it because it could be abbreviated both like in Latin and Japanese. The original working title was Fighting Fantasy, but that was a whole uh, series of books right. of like, uh, you know, choose your own adventure, like game books. So that's funny. Yeah. And then the reason for choosing the word final, the form of the eventual title Final Fantasy was explained as twofold by Yamatsu. For one thing, it stemmed from Saguchi's personal situation as he would have quit the game industry and gone back to the university had the game not sold well. And for another, Square under the threat of bankruptcy at the time, which meant the game would have been com company's last so, uh, though I know. have heard that the bankruptcy part of that story is apocryphal. I've heard but that maybe, maybe, but, it, it, but it's even a thing where people nowadays try to go and ask, uh, uh, Yamaguchi and he's like, I don't even remember what I said or what I meant. And that was 30 years ago. Don't ask me, please. Yeah. That's like, one of the things too, is when you start to get into, I learned this from like <clears throat> studying like star Wars history and watching George Lucas tell the origins multiple times in different ways. 
and and it is literally has a lot to do with memory of like what's important to us and and it may have been you know one day on a car drive he thought about some tangent to do something and then didn't do it and years later said well i thought about this and like oh that was the original plan like yeah he had that idea but he had, he had a lot of ideas yeah he had a lot of reasons and we have a lot of motivations we want we want the canonical story yeah yeah and uh, often the one that winds up getting formed either from the creator or from outside the creator is a simple one, yeah, whether yeah. or not whether oh, yeah. or not we like it. Uh, my pick. Look it up. I got to say, this is, I'm going to, you will really enjoy it if this is up your alley. Oh, <laughs> okay. If I like it, I'm going to like it. Yes. Got it. What is it? Is it a TV show? The new season of You Must Remember This uh, Karina Longworth, she does a history about Hollywood history. And for the last two seasons, she's in the middle of the second part of it now, she has done a series on erotic movies through the 80s and 90s. I've, I'm a huge fan of You Must Remember This. I believe that You Must Remember This has influenced my own podcast production style. But boy... She has said that this season was born out of the fact that she had nothing to do during the pandemic and uh, had a bunch of old magazines she bought on eBay and read through a bunch of old magazines. Oh, my God. Is it, is it very apparent that we are viewing the world through the lens of, like, Entertainment Weekly, Playboy, like, and, and a few other things? Look, if you're into a well-informed critique of erotic movies through a feminist lens, hmm. then you will very much enjoy. There are some that I enjoy more than others. Uh, the only critique that I would have, or try, the largest critique that I would have on this season specifically, is there are a lot of judgments on what the movie was trying to say or what society was trying to say to various reactions mm -hmm. to movies. Um, that, that those reactions feel out of step. I just don't know. I would just say with art sometimes, you know, as, as a, a, you know, a very wise man once said, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. And sometimes it, it, it is something else to some people. Um, sometimes an erotic movie is just there. You know, sometimes the the people are just crazy or or uh, thinly drawn because that is what this story calls for. Sometimes it is a commentary that is deeply held by the creators, but to hold every movie to the standard that every writer and every actress and every actor were trying to get a story out about where we are with sexuality and feminism in every version of these movies is, is a bridge a little too far for me. Okay. Uh, but I still very much enjoy it and I listen to it every week. <laughs> that was the patriarchy talking, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you got a pick? I do. I just finished the book. Remember by Lisa Genova. She also, she's neuro neuroscientist. She's written other books, and she, including she wrote the book that became the movie Still Alice with Julianne Moore, which Julianne Moore won the Academy Award for. And so it's a really interesting overview of how memory works. And uh, uh, it, it's it's funny because uh, you see here on the wiki, on the on the Amazon page, there's a poll quote from Steven Pinker about the book. But in there, she talks about the difference between like simple sentences and complex ones, and she uses this one of Steven Pinker's sentences to say like, well, notice how hard this is to follow or whatever. And by itself, it looks like kind of like a slam, but I believe they know each other and whatnot. So it was just a weird, like without knowing the context, like why did you pick on Pinker for that? Mm. Um, Using but, her expertise as a neuroscientist and her gifts as a storyteller. Yeah, it's a long, it's a little bit of a long sentence. I'll run on. No, but well, that wasn't the one they talked about. This was in the book. She has this whole like, passage from his book and then shows like, yeah, this passage is really hard to follow by the time you get to hear here. And I'm like, I was like, man, like that's weird that she'd pull that. It's a like, weird dig. Mm. It's neither here nor there. 
Uh, she is a really gifted storyteller. She's really good. It's a lot of the same stories if you've studied in memory you've heard before, but she comes from a point of view of knowing what the hell she's talking about. Uh, so I enjoyed it. And that's remember the science of memory and the art of forgetting. It's a lot, a really good overview of, of like why we forget. How do we remember? A loss about Alzheimer's. Oh, if you're yeah. curious about Alzheimer's or worried about that? Ah, read this book. I, I recommend it. So remember by Lisa Genova. Cool. There we go. Well, Mr. Strange, Mr. Bright, <laughs> Mr. Rod, it's been weird. Hey, that's a shoe. All right. You know, the problem is when you would just assume that every character has to be looked at as an archetype, uh. that sometimes you get super overbroad characters that may be not as interesting because you're afraid that little nuances would say something else. Yeah. Yeah. Karina Longworth's married to Ryan Johnson. Oh. <laughs> okay. Just, just saying. Okay. Okay. Just saying. I just saw. I just scrolled by the the uh, the the American Gigolo. The sex positivity sort of. I'm like, yeah. I think hiring prostitutes. I mean. Trust I, me. If you want a very deep discourse into sex work and prostitution. It's the show for you. She talks uh, an awful lot about it. Uh, that th I do think that she is a, a very, very good thinker, and I do think she, she's a great researcher. And that's the problem is like, I think whenever it gets into the politics element of it, um, you know, when it's a side spice, I think it makes everything richer. When it's the main dish, we're just eating a pile of cumin. Mm, interesting. Uh, well, we'll take a short break here, a short cumin break, uh, when we get ready for some after things. <laughs> Do you guys need a break? Do you want? Uh, yeah. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bryce, you got the fort? Yeah, I got this. I got this. I got this. Hello, everybody. It's still Friday, June 23rd, 2023. It's 623-23. That's right. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's a, it's an event that will happen once a month, um, for the next... Oh, interesting. There won't be a day that matches the the last two digits of the year every month in seven years? No, in four in five years, because of February. Ha <laughs> ha. I know smarts. Um Hi everybody. Oh wait, no, in twenty twenty nine. Would twenty twenty nine have a February twenty ninth? Certainly by the by 2030 we were talking about uh, uh uh about all of the marvel and disney delays on cord killers uh cordkillers.com and uh uh one of them was that the avatar movies um that they're working on were going to be be delayed as well and you know it's it's so weird to me when disney is so definitive with dates on stuff that is over a year away you know, they have to be. They ha they have to, but because of, of the exhibitors. But it, but it's it, it's it's just as strange to read. Avatar four will arrive in like twenty thirty five. Like, yeah. how could you possibly tell me that? How could you possibly even tell me what your movie is going to be in? They're not years? telling you. We're overhearing it. They're telling the movie theaters. In any case, I mean, look, it was in the news. I had to read it. We reported on it, mm -hmm. um, and that just feels a little strange. It feels a little strange for these movies, especially given that, like, generally movies take a year or two. Um, uh, not James Cameron's, but um, generally movies just more than a couple years. That like, why even bought? Like, come on, I I don't care that it's February third of twenty thirty one. Yeah, they're basically just trying. It, like, it is it is the industry talking to itself, uh, sure. both the studios and the exhibitors, to say okay, this is this date, and then we're all going to throw out our dates so they don't damage the business unless somebody is actively trying to go head-to-head -head with somebody else. Yeah, They can move their tent poles around so everybody gets their weekend and stuff like that. Sure. Um, but it is still just strange. It is, there's a certain... I, I think, I think reality what, what, you like are, what, what, you are, what you are highlighting, I think, is accurate that we have gotten... Corporate content. Well, and that's because we care. Because we care. Yeah. Oh, uh, 
Yeah, Andrew, I think it changed your devices on you. If you get a chance to check a look at them. Um, uh, we have only gotten more and more into the industry stuff. I mean, like there was a time in which, uh, and this is something that actually is covered a lot on the more historical elements of, uh, you must remember this, that like the concept of us talking about movie grosses and whether or not a movie's a bomb or not, like that is a relatively more recent uptick as we become fascinated with the economics and business and insider elements of that. Before that, all entertainment coverage was effectively a commercial. Like, hey, here's the thing. This thing's going to be really great. This star is really interesting. You're really going to want to see more of this star. And then the movie came out and then, you know, either it succeeded or it failed. And aside from like insider Hollywood trades. Yeah. It would just kind of go away. Internet, the internet for me, pre-internet was Entertainment Tonight, Starlog Magazine, you know, those. Yeah. Basically, you know, Entertainment Tonight was I got my entertainment news and then Starlog Magazine where I'd hear about science fiction th- stuff that was coming out. Um, Andrew, can you do me a favor and reconnect on Opal for us? I think uh, I think your AirPods made it switch. I know. Um, but then we'll be we'll be we'll be G to G. It's um, yeah. uh, but I I agree. I think that we're kind of to the nth degree on it at is this point. Is that better, Bryce? It is Are much you happy better. now? Thank you. I am much happier. Thank you. Right, to the point where look, all success. To the WGA, I'm I'm done hearing about the strike. I, it's fine. Just let me know. Let me know when you boys <laughs> wrap all this up. Uh, uh, solidarity, sol- solidarity forever. Go go go. I hope you you make you you cut yourselves a good deal. I'm done here. I, I it's fine. Whatever. I got my I, own stuff to worry about. Yeah, I I i think like i think the points of like i don't know the fine details of any of this i do think the idea of wanting as a writer who wants to get more insight into like where my books are sold how much are i i get that i get a lot of what those demands are putting all that aside is like uh your enemy isn't paramount it isn't universal it's video games it's sports it's live streaming and it's all these other things like like we'll talk about like I was just at VidCon and we have talked about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's talk VidCon. We, we, oh, yeah. we didn't get to VidCon. Okay. Uh. Well, we, we no. It's not shot fired at Merrill. Oh, it's literally what I told Merrill this morning when he called into my stream. Oh my goodness. All right, you guys want to start some after things? Let's go. Okay. Uh. Then Andrew, take it away in three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I am Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Yo. Hi, Andrew. What's up, Andrew? So, I went to VidCon. Yeah, oh. hype beast. How was that? What does VidCon look like in It's your boy, Andy Main. <laughs> um, uh, it was... It is very interesting to see how, again, complex the VidCon, amazing. They're really put it on. It's great. Like, it's just an incredibly uh, amazing scale of the event of what started off so small. Um, if this is like a global thing now, it's fascinating. Uh, I've been trying to figure out, like, how would I describe it now? And it is like a... Uh, The NAB meets the show choir competition finals or something. <laughs> it's a, bunch of, it's a bunch of show choir kids running around. Yeah. It's it, it, it literally trying to figure out, I know these people from high school. Who were they? And like, oh, show choir. That's who this is. Uh, it was, but then you go over there and you get like, uh, you know, here's a an emoji keyboard with your face. And then here's Blackmagic Design with their new editing <laughs> system and stuff. It was just this, the juxtaposition between like technical equipment and then like uh, super consumer bombs and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot for me to process. It was really, really a lot to process. So aside from seeing your favorite streamers and trying to get autographs, why were you at VidCon? <laughs> like nothing, nothing makes you feel older than you're like, you see, it's like billboards and stuff of people's faces. And you're like, I have, I don't know who anybody is. I have, I'm Bumbo I, Turgis is at VidCon. Oh my Andrew. God. Yeah. No, it's just a, 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 a gigantic installation <laughs> of a 12 year old that says, Jackie Ding Dong is back. 
<laughs> I I went to an event several months ago that was like a bunch of top YouTubers. And I this is not me. This is just how I everybody has their own silo. And I made friends with some people here. And then I'm I at VidCon, I'm like, hey, how you doing? Hey, Andrew, good to see you. Stopped and talked to them. And then like, oh, you know so and so. I'm like, are they big? A thing? <laughs> you know, and like I don't know. Like, there are some cool dudes. It's a really cool idea. I was talking about, and it's just it's just a funny thing because it's like, man, I am not of that world. I'm not of that audience. I'm not into that. I don't. I I I. I and so I'm watching it from the side, going, well, this is interesting. So I spoke on the industry track. I did I spoke for OpenAI, and I talked about the future of creativity. Um, and that was fun because, like, afterwards, you know, I had a group of people come up to me. Actually, somebody who's listened to our podcast and stuff was there and some other people. So, Oh, wow. Um, yeah, uh, we, they're out there. Yeah. No, that's somewhere. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it is it is a – I was at the industry track. I wasn't during there. We're doing, like, the, the I think the bigger the bulk of it starting now. I, I, I keep I did this to the side. Like they had these areas for chaperones because you realize how many kids show up with their parents, and they yeah. have a section for the parents. <laughs> and all I could think is, you know, triumph the insult comic dog. You know, <laughs> talking about which which button do you press for your mom to come pick you up? <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, it 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 my feeling being really immersed in ai and watching things like the apple vision and watching all this stuff is like my feeling is that i'm at the peak of something and something else that's even bigger is coming along and i don't know that it's there hmm. it definitely with the with all the ai tools and seeing how everyone is is i mean gravitating towards it if it's if it's if it wasn't the sub it was people talking about ai the past week because because it's there's there's so still so many new breakthroughs so many new things showing up new efficiencies and 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 uh changes like it is uh it's it would certainly seem foolhardy to only think of it as a fad or something that is uh just trendy um it definitely i was talking with uh uh, uh jason murphy last week about it and it was and saying that it feels like the internet. It feels like it can. It will be an idea as pervasive as the internet. The idea that wherever you are in the world, there is a there is a a layer around you that connects you to everybody else. Like just having a virtual tool for whatever device, for whatever you're trying to do um, will just be very commonplace. Can be very commonplace to the point where there will be children who grow up and don't remember the first ask Jeeves who won't even remember a time before. No one remembers AI. Jeeves or Jeeves. My favorite one was the, the most poorly named one ever was KGB. Oh. They even oh. had commercials for, it. I'm like, yeah, we're going to name it for a, uh, oppressive intelligence gathering organization that tortured and killed people. Like that's, that's, that's our name for our yeah. web search KGB. Like yeah. who, and, and that was if, and then we did commercials for this and it's like, like there's a lot of dumb money in the VC world. I've as I be, I have I've been on conversations with people and said, "Nah, I wouldn't do this because of this." Yeah, okay, and then they do it, and then six months later, like, "Wow, that was a hundred billion dollars we wasted." <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, yeah, like what? What about my thesis was wrong? <laughs> you know. Um, anyhow, um, I do think, and I think that like there's going to be YouTubers influencers like forever that's not going to go away and I, i'm not to say like ah youtube I, I think like i use youtube every day it's one of my favorite ways of getting content and stuff i follow my own people that i really like their content from um i'm not 15 so i, I don't really kind of know that kind of the zeitgeist of the world but i think that is like a super intense world in a very interesting space i did talk to like venture capital that were investing in like influencers and stuff and i think some of it made sense but some of it i'm like you guys are just looking for something. You just ran out of ideas. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that, like, yeah, AI is going to be everything. AI is just, AI is not getting dumber. It's getting smarter. It's getting more capable. AI is getting everything. I think the spatial computing metaphor that Apple puts out there, that idea of, like, what does it mean when we merge the digital space with our physical spaces, which is really what that means. That's going to be an interesting sort of thing. Generative content. I, I don't. I, I don't can't predict it because it could go any different sort of direction, but 
I don't know. I just got the in every wave is huger than the last one. Yeah. It's way bigger. Before we get into a conversation about AI's role in this, uh, Andrew, are you familiar with Baby Gronk? Uh, is this related to the Gronk? Uh, to, can, well. Uh, uh, so this is something that maybe will bring back some emotions that you had when you were uh, had time at uh, VidCon. Don't Google it. The, the, the point is late. that you have to watch a video we're just going to have you watch a video right now. This went viral because I think it gave everybody the same feeling of being out of touch with society. Baby Gronk might be screwed. Baby Gronk's dad is only 5'8". No, this isn't the one. This isn't This isn't the Livy one. We need the Livy one. Well, she was in it. Yeah, so, okay, hold on. We need the OG. OG. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh. By the way, we were early on this. We covered this on Great Night, and like I have seen this mentioned on maybe half the other shows that I that I listened to. Oh, here we go. All right, here we go. Oh, wait. Gronk may have just found his rival. Livy Gunn's boyfriend, Baby oh, Gronk, is... is the number one college football prospect in the country. But his number one spot was just challenged by his new enemy, Baby Diggs. It's a parade inside my city, yeah. Baby Diggs is an elite player who plays both wide receiver and quarterback. He is currently the number one football player in the class of 2030 in New York. He also called out Baby Gronk to 1v1 him. Baby hey, Gronk, I'm calling you out 1v1. Who do you think would win in a 1v1? <laughs> baby Gronk or Baby Diggs? Your comment. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I, I, the one of the things that sports is great for is there's what's on the field, but the more complex a system, the more moving parts to a system, the more things you get to talk about. You, yes. know, you get it. There's a lot to talk about Game of Thrones because there's all these different characters. It's not just who's going to take over the throne, what's going to happen with so-and-so, Mary so-and-so, it's going to happen there. And sports is like that. Sports on one level is fantasy sports. I have these players. What is going to happen here? But then we extend deeper. We go into the multidimensionality of it like, well, what about this college player? You know, what's going to happen? You know, when, what was going to happen when Cam Newton went pro? You know, what was yeah. going to happen to these things? And you just start to go deeper. And then the idea that we're we're prospecting, you know, 10 year old children, children yeah. to say, oh, what, what, what is this going to be? But it's also like, when I'm into a topic, I kind of just want to hear, like, I've been looking for memory books that don't actually talk about memory methods because I know them. I just want to read stories. I yeah. just want to read like commentary and stuff like reading like, uh, like Dominic O'Brien's memory stuff. And he starts to talk about, oh, I was hired by uh trivial pursuit to go do a demonstration and i'm like i just want to read a book of all these demonstrations all the stuff you come up because that's fascinating to me and sports yeah. is like that there's clearly an appetite for stupid stuff because like we just i just don't want to think about sports well so this was not a particularly popular channel it wound up going viral let me just oh here we go Th this convinced. is the one this is the Maybe one that actually went to lsu Baby Gronk is the number one college football prospect in the country. He averages 300 yards and five touchdowns a game. On his visit to LSU, Livy rizzed him up. Livy even hugged Baby Gronk. He might be the new Riz King. Do you think Baby Gronk will lead LSU to a national championship? Livy just convinced oh, don't, don't replay. Okay. So that was really the one that went viral, mostly because so many people are being talked about, phrases. Uh, uh, whether or not Baby Gronk, I mean, Baby Gronk was rizzed up by Livy. Yeah. So there's that. She Could, even hugged him. She even hugged him. Could he be the new Riz King? Where do you stand on Baby Gronk's uh, claim to Riz King, man? I think uh, I don't need to know what that means. <laughs> just say, hey, uh, let the kid pass puberty first before I think I think anytime you're trying to scout kids before they pass puberty, unless they're gonna be gymnasts, doesn't make much sense to me. Uh well, yeah, it's funny you said gymnast. That Livy is a gymnast. So she's a, a big uh, a big hit. And the reason why those two are in the same uh sentence together is because of NIL deals. The the fact that uh it does not disqualify you to take money in college or before college uh, uh, to play in the NCAA these days. And one of those clips even had mentioned that uh, Baby Gronk has already made, like, what, $100,000 on, NL, on I, NIL deals? NIL or? deals as a, as a child, as, as, a, child. A, as a, a prospective 
uh, player for a big program like LSU. But Livy, uh, Livy Dunn is her name. She is. I've seen her before. Yeah, she's 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 a gymnast, but also a gigantic influencer Olivia. who has, uh, who has a a, a huge um, NIL deal as well. Uh-huh. You know, it is in this kind of ties back to the VidCon element of it that the economics of how attention is parceled out is totally different. I mean, like the the world that we grew up in was segmented by various different uh, limitations on technology, really. It was, you know, you're a movie star, you're a, te- you're a television star, you're a radio hit, you know, uh, as a pop star. But uh, now, you know, it, yeah, it, it, it's, the- I think things have, things have broken contain. Livy's rizzing thing? up baby Gronk. By the way, it's charisma. That's what Riz is. So if you if you got rizzed up, then then you are now more charismatic mm-hmm. because uh, uh, somebody very charismatic Rizzing has you given up. you the, I, the blessing. I think the thing that everybody listening to the sound of her voice needs to think about. Yeah. Every time you see this story or you see a thing, there is somebody off camera or off mic with a phone with a phone out texting it who made this happen because somebody was pushing this person. There is a person pushing it. It's not just, or they, they maybe got a little bit of a buzz. There are people who try to make this stuff happen. There is, it could be a parent. It could be a you know manager. It could be somebody. There's somebody pushing the story and trying to organize this sort of stuff. Like, it's just, it's just, all this is manufactured. All this is manufactured. And, and you, you manufacture Absolutely. it when you find something that's material worthwhile, but it's just, yeah, and it doesn't. This it, kid wasn't just playing b- football, and somebody's like some guy, some crusty guy, you know, some Bear Bryant clone is out there watching him from the stands, going, "This kid," you know, it's like his dad or somebody. It's or his whatever. dad. Spoiler and, alert: It's his dad. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, as soon as this went viral, boy, was his dad very excited to step out from behind the shadows and uh, 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 talk about any and everything. But yeah, no, you are totally right. Baby Gronk is a. Well, I mean, like like many, many fathers who have uh, athletically talented, especially in football, uh, they're they're trying to showcase their kid, and that is something that happens earlier and earlier and earlier in our in our modern world. Yeah, I, um, I, uh, it must really suck being a kid right now. It seems like it would suck being a kid compared to how I grew up. Um, but like it, you you, you really that's it. You you have the Pepperidge Farm take. What? Like, 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 what? oh, well, we, we come from a simpler time here. Yeah. Well, Back well, in my day, I just used to watch MTV. And yeah, well, you eat know. In a hot pocket. But, <laughs> now these kids need to get NIL and rizzed up by Livy if they want to be the cool kid. Uh, in, in the 90s, you were only, uh, uh, the amount of people who were at your fingertips in terms of con- contacting people was very small. And now you're always, con- you're always connected to people with, the internet with uh digital and just pervasive media um uh, it's a huge boon for a lot of people though yes I, I, I'm, especially I'm not, if you're uh, the world around you kind of is stinko malenko and i'm not it's saying very, that it's, it's very black awesome plague. i'm not saying we got i'm not saying it's the black plague or yeah. nothing but it just uh it's sorry bryce that you were so popular in high school <laughs> you're like i just can't fit anything else in my schedule because you know? i'm just so popular no it's you know it, i don't know uh i just i just th- i think about it a lot because like i don't go to high school i don't see high school children i don't know what problems that they have or what life is like for them yeah but i do f- have a, a memory of being in school and feeling like i was at the whim of educators and adults and parents who had no sense of what it was like going to that school or going through the things I had to go through. Um, and so I, I just wonder like our parents, I don't know, this is getting way off track. I, 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 I agree with you. It sucks to be a kid. I just don't know whether or not it sucks more or less yeah. now than, than it did when we were growing up. Because and it, it, I, it, it, it's an awkward time. And finding out the answer there, to that doesn't help anybody either way. The, the result of that question is a total hypothetical uh, exercise. It doesn't help anybody. Well, there, there's a fad that I think thankfully declined a little bit, and I think maybe because the algorithm shift, but it was like the, the family vloggers. You I know. was just thinking literally when I went to go get this drink about the the episode we did about Daddy O Five. 
Yeah. That, that that this is a big controversy at the time because it was the family vloggers, uh, and there was a lot of pranks. Uh, uh, but it was it was certainly pre whenever there's because there still are a lot of the families that do this kind of content, but it's all like very G. Like, like it is all just music playing while the family builds a sandcastle kind of stuff that is designed for YouTube kids. Yeah. Um, th this kind of stuff where it's like it was for an all ages, if not more of a teenage audience where the dad is like playing psychologically scarring <laughs> pranks on his children. Uh, Blowing an air horn at my kid's bedroom at 3 a.m. Emotional <laughs> HD. Yeah. Um that I, I agree with you. That one, that one, we can we can uh, uh, leave to the ash heap of history. <laughs> well, and it was it was, and that was a thing that sort of brought out kind of the scary thing is being entertainment, being around like stage moms and stage dads, and and seeing like Dan, like I, people ask me like, hey, I'm thinking about getting my child and an actor. I'm like, you know, physically abusing them is just faster and cheaper. <laughs> Like, what, what do you mean? I'm like, what do you, what do you, what, how many cautionary tales of young actors taking their life or falling into drug, you know, drug dependency or whatever do you have to hear before you realize, oh, this is a horrible thing. Yeah. And particularly the, the kid actors who do kind of do better are the ones that come from rich families because the parents aren't dependent upon it. They, yeah. they can like, oh, I'm going to let you act as long as they get out of control. Once the family needs that paycheck. And it's like, oh, you know, Just, producer so and so wants to take your eleven year old kid to Disney World. Ah, oh, sounds great to me. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, yeah. this is a so, big break. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, and that's like when you look at the tragedy around a super famous now deceased pop star and the families that were sending their kids to them and stuff, and they were financially dependent. And so, on point, it's like, like, uh family vlogging and that was like it just sort of brought out you know the balloon boy dads it just brought out the oh, worst yeah. of a lot of people of just exploiting you know all of this yeah no more media if we yeah. get if we get rid of media we won't have media chasers like this no more media all podcasts well, are I, over again, tv comes, shows over it comes back the news back to us analyzing what we're you know you do a show that's like <laughs> you know uh you know, sex beast island or whatever you want to call it. We're going to take 25 year old of the dumbest people we've ever met with the best physiques. And we're going to put them on an island and watch what happens. It's fine. It's what they're good for. It's what they're made for. They're adults. It's this, it's whatever. We're going to watch them say stupid stuff and do stupid things, but that's the world, whatever, you know, when it's like, yeah, I'm going to force my nine year old kid on camera and, you know, yeah. Yeah. And tell them this. it's a prank, bro. It's a, Oh God. And yeah. ultimately, it ruined pranks. I pranks ruined pranks. Pranks are not. You should have to have a doctorate. To I do would pranks. feel a prank do license. Pranks. Do you have a license for that prank? I'm not for occupational licensing in general, <laughs> but I, I feel like you should for 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 pranks. This is my hidden camera card. Pu public, public, and private. Wow. Like Ooh. you should you you should have to carry fifty thousand dollars worth of insurance and have a. <laughs> Uh, a, a, a federal and state license, Frank. or at least be doing it on a major network. I mean, yeah. I mean, when when you're there, when you're working with that level of apparatus, right? Of course. Yeah. That's all we're yeah. looking for. Pranks for thee, yeah. but not for. Uh, my my field is ruined <laughs> Prank by amateurs. Pranks for thee, but not for me. <laughs> oh my god, that's that's great to go out on. Uh, any picks? Hmm. I, I actually haven't. I've been mostly just playing Tears of the Kingdom, man. Yeah, I've been playing Final Fantasy. This kingdom's crying, my guy. This is the last one. Weeping. Uh, I've been playing, um, <laughs> right, uh, as I look for my phone, which is not in front of me here. Uh, let me make sure I got this. Uh, oh, let me pull it up here. I'm gonna, I want to get the name right. I want to get everybody. Sure. Uh, Valley for me, cover, cover. Yeah, hey, um, Bryce, what, what are you playing? Are you Final Fantasy, anything else? Are you still playing Gran Turismo? Uh, I am. Though, uh, you know, uh, talking of new games, uh, I'm playing a game on the Apple Arcade, Punch Punch Kick Punch Plus. So I think it's a remaster of an older game, but it's a, it's a little uh, fighting game, and you got two buttons, and one of them's punch and one of them's kick, and that's all you do is you tap. 
uh, and the numbers go up. So punch, punch, kick, punch on the Apple Arcade. Yeah, so I have an Apple Arcade pick too, and uh, uh, <laughs> like, I hope Apple takes gaming seriously now with the Vision OS because what sucks is like I have an Apple Arcade and my primary way of using it is when I chill out is to open up my Apple TV, which like I think there's like two games on all of Apple. I think maybe one game per year that they actually support with Apple Arcade. Yeah. Uh, and then it'll be like, oh, the first generation controller. Wait, I brought the brand new Apple TV. Yeah, sucks for you. because oh, they've had a motion thing in that first one. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, you can get your, you know, you can use a bigger game controller. Like, well, listen, if I have a big game controller here, I might as well be playing a big game console. Game, <laughs> you yeah. know, it's just this really, really, really poor thinking. That being said, though, uh, the one I played a lot before was uh, Hidden Folks. Then there was the Solitaire. My current one, well, I just beat it and I'm waiting for an update is Disney Spellstruck. Oh, really? Uh, Spell struck. La, 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 la. Spell struck. It's uh, making words on a grid, you know, play before I go to bed at night uh, thing. It's uh, scrabbly like that, I guess. Oh, I think we lost you, Andrew. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. It was so good oh, for I think so it's long. Us too. Did we just die? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, because you're not being able to load anything. At least, well, are we, are we still recording? Screaming. Oh, we're okay. streaming? Oh, there oh, he is. You're back. back. Okay, you're back. Yeah. Hello. Sorry, we lost you. Um, uh, let me let me ask you ask you back. So, Spellstruck. That's is it? It's just it's Scrabble. Is this a Scrabble game? Uh, it's it's very Scrabble like. Yes. Okay. No, that's cool. I mean, like, hey, I'm yeah, down man. For it. it looks like it's about to get rizzed up by Livy, <laughs> the target demo. Is is there anything? What makes Spellstruck different than say Scrabble with friends? I play this by myself. I don't know. Oh. It's just Scrabble, Bryce. Why are you? Yeah. Why are you pushing? It's me? Disney themed Scrabble. It's okay. With yeah. a little bit of a, uh, you know, some fun animations, and it looks like an overarching uh, uh, map oh, system. Like, yeah, there's like a Mario World, an over overworld on this. Okay. That's cool. And a lot of lot of judgment here from Bryce in the position. I just I know I'm the withering judgment. To learn more about the product. Ah, uh, I don't. This isn't real gamers. <laughs> you know, when I was the coolest kid in high school, we used to bully people like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still happens. Still yeah, continues to this day. Bryce is stuffing Maine into his locker for this spell struck I offense. Just like my game, Bryce. Spell this S T U F F stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Disney spell struck. Yeah. Uh, oh, and I will do another pick. I'll do a little. Bonus Go ahead. Pick. So, uh, I went through this thing where I was trying to learn how to read faster and how to read, get more words per minute. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, Maybe what I need to do is read more. Ah. I know. Brilliant. So I think I've said this before, but uh I went and uh I bought the uh I bought the new uh the new Kindle, like the not the fanciest one, but I bought the Amazon Kindle paper white, the the one that's got the it's like a hundred bucks or something like that. Let me figure out if I can figure out which one this is. So I bought one for every room where I spend more than 10 minutes at a time really so that means here my bathroom and my bedroom right mm -hmm. and so i bought multiple of these 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 uh is it the, it's got the 6.8 inch display um i think this is the one i got uh but anyhow i have one right here it is i think it is a really really well done designed device other than the fact they put the the power button on the bottom so when i set it into a stand it'll flip on mm. battery lasts a really long time i have one in every room now so that if i want to sit down and read i can just pick it up and because of the sinking it sinks across them and um you know i took it on my air flight and it was easy to fit this into a pocket you know you normally get on a pl flight i'm like i'm scrambling for my ipad and all that and i just had this in my phone and i'm set so uh i had a uh uh canceled flight so i had to make it from anaheim to to my home via a trip to Las Vegas. And so it was plenty of time to finish a book, but man, these things are just really handy. Just really, really handy. They're very lightweight now, very easy to use, very comfortable yeah. to read. And I do read more with it. It, as it. Especially if you read a lot, read 
outside of the house, read a lot of digital stuff. Those Kindles, it's hard to beat a dedicated device. Like yeah. even the old Kindle that I had back in the day, the, the free 3G one, like, you know, you don't need a lot to make a, a digital book really, really good. And Amazon's been making these Kindles for a long time that there is a lot of good quality of life, like this, the whisper sync stuff. And, um, did the the because they've got it's got the word reading um tools on some of the kindle apps right yeah they've got the a lot of little other helpful stuff too but it's just just in general um you know that the idea of having a device that isn't going to all of a sudden you're going to click over and start looking at you know twitter or you're going to start looking at something else yeah is super helpful like i think just the idea of having a device that's just Dedicated for reading. I have I have a uh, my setup here is I have the these stands. Oh, oh cool. Okay. It's is that a magnetic so stand? Just, no, no, right. it's just a be- basic stand. Okay. So I just keep that there. So there's always a Kindle, you know, around me. And I do read more now. And also there's like great things with Kindle Unlimited and whatnot. You know, you pay 10 bucks a month. There's a ton of content, ton of like, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna read this book. I'm like, oh, it's free. You know, like I think most of my stuff is if you've subscribed to Kindle Unlimited, it's free. Yeah. Um, that uh, like it, it, all of the unlimited, sir. I mean, there, there, there could be a longer conversation about this, but I think it was really fascinating seeing content buffet style services like this. Yeah. Um, uh, cause like I have one, I have the PlayStation game pass and once a month I just get a bunch of new games that I just, I don't, I can try or not try and it's not a big deal. Yeah. I'm using the, the, uh, I guess this one is the 2022 release. So this is just a hundred bucks. Yeah. The other one is, is the new paper whites bigger. When was that released? But yeah, I'm using this one and man. And also like there's apps on there too, like to let you download like library books and other things. And so nice. I don't know, man. I'm a fan. Good stuff. Very cool. How's it been? Cool. It's been after. Hey, good shoe, everybody. Uh, That's going to do it for us here on a Friday. Uh, um, We've got more stuff coming to you. Uh, You doing anything over the weekend? Any streaming or? No. No. Uh, I I might. There might be a test stream because I think I'm going to try and work on my set a little bit. Ooh, we'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, we'll have See it. Cord Killers on Monday. Great night on Tuesday. Hey, Gigstan, the app. Come see Great Night Live in Austin next Friday. Yeah. Uh, check it out. Gigstan, the app. Um, yeah, I think that'll do it. Cool times. Thank you, everybody. See you, folks. <laughs>